Welcome everybody. It's Jeff from Home Renovision and today is going to be a fun day. We're going to have a little bit of fun today. We're talking about paint gear. We're talking about equipment. We're talking about getting value for money, where to shop, what tools do you use, Jeff, all this kind of stuff. Okay, let's just jump into it. What I did is I went shopping. Now, you all know I've done videos on painting before. I have a personal preference as far as my rig is concerned and it costs about a hundred bucks. And so for me, if I'm going to be painting something, I want to eliminate problems. I want to eliminate risk. I don't want to finish a project and go, oh, darn, there's lint from the roller on the wall. Now I got to sand that off and paint that wall again. It's the wrong time to try to save money. Remember, when you're renovating your own house, guys, when you paint the inside of your house, you increase the value of your house by 5%. Same with the outside. So if the average home is 300000 that's a $15,000 increase in your return on investment by painting. It's the wrong time to try to save nickels when it comes to your paint gear. I understand there's people out there that are like, I want to paint. They got to keep their costs down. I get it. But let's just focus on producing the most amazing production that we can. And to do that, you need professional gear. We just can't be working with inferior products. So I went to Home Depot to shop. I went on Amazon to shop and I went to Sherman Williams to shop. And we're going to share all the different products today and we're going to see what is going on. Now, first of all, Let's go, let's not start at the professional store because we already know the answer there. You're gonna get professional stuff, right? Let's talk about my rig. My rig, I like this. I like a Sherlock. I like because it reduces my work. It makes me less fatigued. The, the handle is not a threaded pipe. It clips on, all right? This cage is great. It's got ball bearings in it and I use microfiber sleeves. That's my setup, all right? So this and a good brush runs me about a hundred bucks. And that's not a big deal. There's no real cost there, right? So for a hundred bucks, you can have a professional rig. Unfortunately, the options are, let's go to the box store, okay? Because they sell some really weird things there. So I went over to Home Depot, all right? And what we found is this. They've got these different categories of quality that they're selling. A good sleeve, a better sleeve. It literally says it on the package. And a premium sleeve. All three of these are a knit product. They're not microfiber. They're not professional grade, right? And they're costing three to five dollars. My sleeve costs 10. The difference is my sleeve, that sucker right there, I can use that for months. I can wash it and use it and wash it and use it. These things are kind of like one and done because after one use, the lint starts falling out and you can't do another project with it. So good? Nope, garbage. The um, better? Nope, garbage. Garbage. If it's not microfiber, it's garbage. You're wasting your time. Why even have one? What, are you going to try to save a buck? $100 a product and you want to save a buck? Let's dive into the next section. So we've got the sleeve figured out, right? And we got to talk about the cage. My cage is from Wooster. The whole system, the pole and the cages, they're designed to lock together. It's great engineering. When I go to Home Depot, there, I got this. Now, this is a really traditional cage. It's just a couple of bucks. It's cheap. It's flimsy right? And it bends really easily. It doesn't, they don't even have a company's brand name on here. All right. It's just in the orange Home Depot color. And it's supposed to give you some sort of sense of, oh, that must be a good investment. No, all of these roller cages like this are the same. They're junk. They're one and done. They maybe last a couple of uses and that's it. Okay. So don't buy this kind of junk. Um, this one costs four forty-eight. You ever heard that expression? You get what you pay for? This is four bucks and 48 cents. My cage is almost 20. My cage will last me 10 years as a pro. This will last me 10 minutes. I'm telling you right now, I bought some of these before in a hurry because I didn't have my cage in stock. And by the time you roll it up the wall, it's already bending and it's starting to get all crunchy and weird looking and you can't paint straight anymore. It drives you nuts. Let's get rid of that crap. We don't need that. Now, I'm not saying that Home Depot is a lousy place to shop. When you're shopping there, be aware that they're marketing to a bunch of different price points and make sure you're buying quality. This is on for sale at Home Depot as well. And it's a Wooster Pro. This is a great brush, all right? This is a quality brush. Check this out. These three little dots here, these are the nails. These are the, what's holding this thing together, okay? A good quality brush, you can buy it, but you gotta know the brand name. You can't just buy whatever based on price or you're gonna get screwed. So when you're shopping, consider that the brand name is more important than the price, okay? Let's talk about trays, because this is one of the things that drives me nuts. This is a tray and this holds one quart of paint, okay? It's a quarter of a gallon. Who's painting? We're using this thing. I don't know. You've gotta buy the, the, the liner as well, because if you paint in an aluminum tray, you can't just add hot water and pull the paint back out. Here's the tray that I use, okay? Bennett, you can get Sims, it is a full gallon of paint can go in here, which means you can open the can, pour it in here, three quarters of a gallon. And what you got left is a quarter of a gallon, which is your cutting can. And that works perfect every time. And then you can work with that. You don't have to buy another cutting can. With this thing, yeah, you save a few bucks on your tray. You got to buy a liner, but now you can't cut. You can't, you can't put your brush in three quarters of a gallon of paint and be successful. So you got to buy another cutting can. 
And if you want to, you can buy one of these handy pills. Now the handy pill comes with these inserts, okay? They got a magnet on the side here, so your paintbrush metal will actually stick to it and it'll hold it out so you don't end up damaging your brushes. And that's fabulous. And there's nothing wrong with that system. I'm just saying you don't need to invest in that if you get a bigger tray. Now, the thing is, you know, if you're all day long painting, this is com this is comfortable. Right? And so I actually use these once in a while when I'm using one color and I'm going to be all day long on a ladder cutting and rolling. I'll use that just to save myself the hand cramp. The other thing is when you're holding a can, okay, like this to, to get your, your, your cutting brush out of, sometimes the little metal rod on the side will break off <laughs> and you can have a painting accident, which is no fun. So... Um, other things you're gonna need guys, make sure you get your, yourself a sanding sponge, okay? Something with this sloped edges. The sloped edges are amazing because they allow you to go into the corners and without creating extra work, right? Everybody's gonna need a five in one. This thing here opens the can. This curve here is for cleaning your brush out with extra paint. All right, and this thing here, this tip, when you open up your can, you can put that on there, hit it with a hammer, punch a couple of holes in the rim so all the paint that's on the edge of your can drips back into the can. You're also gonna need a razor blade. Make sure you get one of these. Don't buy the cheap little plastic version. Spend the extra dollar, all right? Go from three to four, get yourself a metal razor blade. This will clean stickers off the windows and all that kind of junk. And it'll be a lifesaver. And you know what? When it comes right down to it, Home Depot sells all that equipment and you can get good stuff, but they also sell junk. So you gotta be careful. Wooster started in like 1851. Guy, the guy made handmade paintbrushes and sold them door to door. That's a company that's been around, right? They've learned a few things. There are companies on the market now that started in the 80s and the 90s and they're trying to compete doing knockoff products. You just want to stay away from it. Let's go on to the Sherwin-Williams place. And everybody sells the same thing. There's contractor paint tarps, all right? These are medium weight. In most cases, they have a um, waterproof uh, treatment on one side, so they're great, but they're slippery on hardwood floors, so you can't use them there. Be careful. Put a tarp on a hardwood floor and you walk on it, you'll wipe out, you'll land on your ass. I'm telling you right now, it's dangerous. All right, at the Sherwin-Williams, you're also gonna find this here from 3M. 3M's a great company, they make great products. They got great chemistry. They're into adhesives and caulkings and stuff like that, right? So they make great tape. This is here is designed for doing masking jobs, okay? You stretch it, you cut it, you tape it, and then the, the plastic pulls down and you can seal up your project so that you can avoid overspray if you're doing paint spraying. Love me some 3M, okay? Great stuff. Remember, you don't have to buy the blue tape. If you buy the brown masking tape and you're indoors and there's no direct sunlight, it'll work just fine. And it's usually less than half the price. So don't be afraid to save a few bucks, all right? Buy the uh, brown. And if you get a bit of sunlight and you're only gonna be there for a couple of days, buy the green, you're still a couple bucks cheaper a roll. Blue is so that you can set it up, prep it, and leave it for a week in direct sunlight. That's why it's blue, to let you know. It's the most expensive and it performs really, really well, but it's completely unnecessary in a lot of applications. So don't just go reach for blue just because you need tape. Think about your purchase because you can save a few bucks there. Sherman Williams also sells this wonderful little thing, okay? And this is a strainer. And you can put this on your paint can and you can pour your paint if it's been open for a long time and it's starting to get a skin on it so you can get remove the skin from your paint so that you're not painting chunks okay chunks are bad if you start painting a wall and you see chunks in your paint stop get a strainer pour it into a brand new can you can buy one for like five to seven bucks empty can and you can transfer your paint and get it strained this is actually a straining screen on the bottom works great and it'll save your bacon because then you won't have to buy a brand new can remember if your paint gets dry skin and chunky it's it's garbage you can't paint a wall like that you're gonna have to sand it and paint it again anyway so avoid that process. Another great company is Purdy. The reason I bought this brush to bring it over here is because I wanted to show you the difference. This one's called Ultra Stiff, and this one is soft. Now they both make the same version of the other paintbrush, okay? They both make stiff and soft brushes, but there's a reason for it. A soft brush is for cutting in on your wall paint. The stiff brush is for whenever you're painting your trim. Think about this. A soft brush leaves lots of paint on the wall, which is good when you're cutting. The stiff brush leaves very, very little paint. Now, when you're working with semi-gloss on your trim and your windows and your casings, less is more. You wanna put as thin a layer of paint as possible to get the best end result. And you wanna usually paint two coats, even sometimes three. So the stiff brush gives you the best result without getting that drippy, hangy, ugh, kind of look, okay? So that's the secret you need to know. And here we go microfiber sleeves. This is 10 bucks. The junk I threw on the ground was three, $4, $5. Seriously, you wanna save five bucks on something you're gonna throw in the garbage when you're done? Now, if that's your intention, you don't wanna wash your roller, then you know, buy a cheap roller sleeve, but you might run into trouble by the end of the job where the fiber's starting to come out and land on the wall. This stuff here, you can just give this a quick wash before you get started. 
spin it dry, and then you're good to go. And it will not release fibers on your wall. It's just the way it works. Microfiber rules, okay? And you can get at least 10 rolls out of this. Just got to wash it, let it dry, and then you can use it over and over and over again. And you get great bang for your buck. One more thing. Um, I want to talk about this. Okay, these radio sanders. There's a couple of different products, companies out there that I like. One of them is level 360. This one is actually hide. This is a very basic version. Level 360 is a little more complicated and they've got different options and you can swap out different heads and finishes. So that it's very handy, but they make great pads and they're all interchangeable. They're all hook and loop. So don't worry about it. So if you run out of your, your sanding discs, they're all nine inch, they're all hook and loop. You can interchange, just get what you need. Don't worry about the supplier. Here's one more thing that I want to talk about. And then we're going to do a live demo. Nah, we won't do the demo. We'll make a video. But I want to show you this. Easy Pro Texture. This is also available at Home Depot. Not always on the shelf, but on the, on the website. All right. And this is really great. If you have a textured wall and you're from the south, you buy this little gun. It goes on your air compressor. This little bag hooks up underneath. Okay. And then you can do spot repairs. Isn't that amazing? So if somebody punches a hole in the wall or, or, the, or the, the door stop, doesn't work and the door handle goes through the wall. You can just sand that down, patch it like regular drywall, come back, hit it with the easy texture. And then after about five minutes, you can do the knockdown on that sucker and paint it in like as if it never happened. A lot of the uh, texture sprays that you're going to see on the market, like the Homax, we tried that one time and it was a disaster. You got to spray it and then you got to roll it. So like, why do I have to do two things? Like that's just nuts. All right. So this works great. I've seen it in action, really happy with that product. So if you have that kind of texture issue, then that's where you want to go. That's basically it for my rig. Okay. Remember you need a stick. You want it adjustable. You can get a two to four foot. That'll do most rooms. If you have taller vaulted ceilings, get this, get the uh, four to eight foot stick, right? That'll work great too. And you're going to need to have a good cage, something that lasts. You can buy one. It'll last you for years. Remember, painting is something we do as homeowners on a regular basis. So don't buy stuff that has to be thrown in the garbage when you're done your job. Buy stuff that's going to last. Invest an extra 10 or 15 bucks now and then earn that 10 or $15,000 worth of investment by repainting your house. And, and you buy one good setup and you're good to go because you can only use one brush at a time. You can use a brush like this, wash it, spin it dry, and you're good to go in the next paint right away. You don't need to leave it overnight to dry. You don't need six brushes. You just need one. All right. And if the three inch brush is, seems a bit too much for you, maybe get the two and a half. Okay. It's a little lighter and, it, and you're going to move a little slower, but it gives you a little bit more control. That's about it for now. All right. Now we're going to jump into the questions here today. I want to know all about your paint problems because there's a ton of paint problems out there. There's a lot of different technology. There's a lot of different building construction. There's a lot of people who've got older homes that use different products and you're having problems making your transition to newer products. Oh, so let's just jump into this very thing here. Um, by the way, at the end of the day, when you go on Amazon to do your shopping or you go to Home Depot, remember Home Depot has a lot of great products, but they also carry a lot of cheap knockoffs. And I don't know why they do that. It's not necessary. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's because they know if they sell a $3 piece of junk, you're going to come back and buy another $3 piece of junk the next time. But I'm telling you right now, just buy the $10 sleeve and use it a hundred times. Problem solved, right? Now there's 10 cents a sleeve. <laughs> but you want to know the brands. Okay. So here are the brands. And if you buy these companies, whatever the system is, you're going to be happy. Uh, Purdy is a great brand and they make trays. They make handles that actually adjust from nine to 18 inches. Okay. So you can get as big a roller as you want. Of course they have all the brushes. Uh, Wooster is a great company. Uh, the Easy Pro is a great company. 3M is a great company. Okay, so they make sanding sponges, they make tapes, they make all kinds of stuff. The Handy Pail is a great company. Hyde's a great company. Level 360 is a great company. DAP is a great company when it comes to doing caulking and all that kind of stuff. Just do yourself a favor. You know, like for the love of God, if you're not sure, just do a quick Google search, find out what company's been in business for a while. And that's usually going to be a good, safe bet. If you're buying North American companies, you're buying quality, you're buying that, that tradition of quality, okay? And you're not going to spend your money on something that's disappointing. Like for instance, when I did a Google search on this for Amazon, for my Sherlock stick, the page rolls up and there's about 50 knockoffs on the market. Now this one costs 35 bucks, but as a pro, you don't want to buy something that's going to break tomorrow. You want something that's going to last you for years. And as a homeowner, if you're going to do any serious painting, you don't want to buy something that's like going to make it through the one room and then have to throw it out because it's cheap aluminum and it doesn't have the same quality control. All right. So don't do that to yourself. Just think of this way. If you were going to go car shopping and your favorite car that you wanted to buy was 50 grand. And then there was a, a next door, there was a, a new, new automotive company that comes out of the Pacific Rim somewhere. And they were giving away three cars for 50 grand. Would you really want to be in that car? Like, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get 
halfway to work and it's going to break down. Or you're going to get an accident. It's going to fold up like a cardboard box. I'm just saying, you get what you pay for. So don't be afraid to spend a few bucks because a good rig is only a hundred bucks. I'm done ranting. Remember, it doesn't matter where you shop. If you go to a pro store, they sell pro stuff. Great. If you go to the Home Depot, they sell pro stuff too. You just got to know what the brands to buy. And if you're shopping online, make sure you buy the brands that I said are good brands and you're going to be just fine. You never save money buying cheap. You just never do. You always end up disappointed. Don't disappoint yourself. You deserve to work with quality tools. Spend a few bucks and enjoy it.